Hello there. How are you? That lighting is not good. I'm going to pull that one off. I think that goes better for us. Um, this is Dr. Julie. This is my bread basket this afternoon. And I want you to know how to cash in on your weaknesses. I don't even know if you realized you could do that. But I bet you, you know you have weaknesses. So we're going to be talking about that today. How to gain God's bounty, gain God's favor, gain downloads from the heavenly realms when you admit your weaknesses. So let me open us in prayer. Father God, I just ask you to come right now and help us with this, help me with this. I pray you would cut off any distractions that are occurring, that the listeners would just be engaged. I ask that you would help us in our heart of hearts to admit our weaknesses and to recognize your great love for us and how you want to meet us in the middle of those weaknesses. So have and I just want you to realize that when you admit that you have a weakness in your life, God actually is paying attention and he's going to give you some bounty. Now, I'm going to mention in a minute some of the weaknesses I bumped into for myself this past week, but I'll bet you, you've got some. Uh, I was just thinking about what I know to be going on around me. Um, I know that there are po people who have chronic weakness regarding physical illnesses, IBS, arthritis, migraine headaches. And I know that there are people who are having difficulty managing their children. And some people are having anxiety when it comes to handling their finances. Some are in conflict with their spouses. All of us are facing weaknesses in various ways. And I found that when I face a weakness, one of the things I do is I diss myself. I dump on myself. I reject myself and show disrespect. And last week in the bread basket, we talked about how to get rid of our dissing ourselves. And I urge you to look at that if you didn't see it already. But in this case, what I want to do is share with you three things that happened to me that are examples of weakness, how they played out, and how God met me in them. The first one was my meeting with a young lady client. We were talking about depression and body image and conflict with parents. And all of a sudden, in the midst of this dialogue, we were about 25 minutes into our session, she had a really good idea. And I remember thinking, boy, that is a terrific idea. I've got to highlight that and, and underscore it. And as I opened my mouth to say that, I had this complete brain freeze. And then I began dissing myself, like, oh my gosh, this is early onset Alzheimer's. Oh my gosh, am I becoming like my mother who was 97 and didn't really have a good mind on her shoulders at all? So <clears throat> what I want to talk about is what happened at that moment. After I began to diss myself, I said, no, stop that. That's not doing any good. Lord, help me. And then I admitted my weakness. And I turned to the young lady and I said, I am so sorry. I, I had a brain freeze. I completely forgot what it was you were saying, but it was important. So she said, I was talking about automatic negative responses. And I complimented her on that and we moved through the rest of our session. And later, when I was preparing for this blog, it got me laughing because it was on automatic negative responses that happens to me a lot and think of all the possible things I could have forgotten and that was it, what they call that a Freudian slip or something like that. Another problem I had is I wanted to go onto an airline site to book tickets for a trip I wanted to take and I needed to chip in my points in order to um, pay for the ticket. And I bumped into all sorts of problems. I thought it was going to be a five minute job. And really, 10 minutes into it, I couldn't even log in. They said, set your, reset your password. I tried to reset a variety of passwords. They say, you have to use nothing you've used in the last 20 passwords. Like I have a list of 20 passwords. Finally, I gave up and I called the customer service rep who was a really great lady. And um, she said, first she said, I am sorry you're having a hard time. And I have to admit that that really helped. It helped that I actually told her I was having a hard time. So then what happened was um, she and I got on the website and lo and behold, she had a hard time with it because it had been made new and it was set up differently. And make a long story short, I became increasingly impatient and I realized that one of my weaknesses was not just computer illiteracy and a bit of a high nervousness when it comes to managing the computer, but it was also a problem with um, impatience that I was kind of frustrated with myself. And I finally said, Lord, forgive me for my impatience. And I went on um, and we got the job done, although it took an hour and a half. 
And a third way that I faced weakness this past week was in my exercise program. I had developed a fairly good aerobic system, a system of, for aerobic exercise, but I hadn't done it for 10 days because I'd been gone. And when I finally got back into it, I was winded after half of the time. And again, I began to diss myself. Like my dad died of a heart attack at a young age. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, my heart's giving up. Oh my gosh, I'm such a poor discipline. And yet again, I had to say, Lord, please forgive me and help me in this situation. So these are three examples in which I faced weakness and I had to turn to the Lord and apologize to him. Now, you all are probably familiar with the famous uh, thorn in the flesh passage where in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, Paul writes, after he's been talking to God about the thorn in the flesh, he says, God said to me, my strength and power are made perfect, which means fulfilled and complete, and show themselves most effective in your weaknesses. So that is what it really means when God's grace is sufficient in our weaknesses. It is that our weaknesses allow him to show his great strength. So I did a little research this past week on um, how it is that uh, God can bless us in the midst of our admitting our weaknesses. And I found three things that I think are relevant for us. First and foremost, God draws close to us when we admit our weakness. We, weaknesses actually attract God. Now you may be saying, why in the heck does that happen? And it is because it allows us to become dependent on him. That's the sweet spot for our existence, being dependent on our Heavenly Father. So I just want to say that, that one of the reasons um, is that our weakness attracts God. Another is that our weakness actually calls us into a position to live in a pattern, in a habit, habitual way that God recommends. And that is on a piece by piece, increment by increment, day by day basis. You know, he gave the Israelites manna and heaven one day at a time. I have a friend, Jess, who is um, working on a bodybuilding program so she can compete in this um, art form, if you will, this exercise program. And it has caused her to have to look at God on an increment by increment. She has looked at him for diet change and she has looked at him for uh, weight bearing increases and reps uh, on her muscle groups. And what she has said is that instead of worrying about the future, instead of worrying about tomorrow, what she is focusing on is simply each day asking the Holy Spirit to give her more power, more grace, more self-discipline in order to achieve her goals. And so she has acknowledged her weakness, like, oh, it's hard for me to lift this weight, turns to God and says, please give me your strength so I can accomplish this. Um, one of the third things is that our weakness, <clears throat> our weakness is something that we can be thankful for. And God has actually said, there's nothing in this world that he created that we shouldn't be thankful for and we should go ahead and be thankful for any weakness. And when that happens, we sanctify that weakness under God. Let me see if I can explain that to you a little bit better. Um, the verse I'm referring to is 1 Timothy 4, 4 through 5. For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with gratitude, for it is being sanctified or set apart for God. So what this means is when we are in a position of weakness and things are, um, things are not going well, and I see some people signing in very, thank you guys very, very much for signing in. Um, I don't know if I can take care of those notes, but uh, thank you. Um, so just to give you an example about this idea of sanctifying a problem that we have, this morning I wanted to refresh my notes on this blog and I had left them in my purse so I went to get my purse and I couldn't find my purse. And I went to the, all the usual places. And at this point I'm a little nervous because my purse has got you know all the valuables in my life in there except my horse and my dogs. But um, what happened was I had to remember this lesson which is give thanks to God for the problem, the adversity, my weakness, God, please, I thank you that I've lost my purse, and I sanctify it to you. I turn it over to you to make this situation holy. 
And I took a deep breath and I moved on to try to figure out how to work on the blog without my notes. And within seconds, God said, you left it on the front porch, which was a bizarre place for me to leave it, but it had to do with unloading um, Halloween pumpkins and whatnot. So that's an example of how we can give thanks in the midst of difficulties and weaknesses um, and God draws close to us. So let me review for you. I think I actually forgot one verse because somebody signed on right there and I got distracted. So I want to share a verse from um, Isaiah 57, 15. And this is one I had never heard before, but it is an example of how God is attracted to those of us who are weak and humble and contrite in spirit and willing to admit our weaknesses. Isaiah 57, 15 from the Message Translation. This is God speaking. I live in the high and holy place with those spirits who are contrite and humble. I restore the crushed spirit of people who are humble and I revive their courage of those who have repentant hearts. So God wants us in our state of humility. He wants us in our state of weakness. Here are two other verses that I just want to share that were new to me. Psalm 29 11, the Lord will give strength to his people. Plain and simple folks, you're his person, you have a weakness, simply say, God, I have a weakness, give me your strength. And another one is Psalm 18 1, and it says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. And I call upon the Lord, and I'm saved from my enemies. And what are our enemies? Honestly, in this day and age, for me, my enemies are my weaknesses. I don't have terrorists coming at me. I don't have a lot of enemies coming at me from out there. I'm not being bullied, thankfully. But I do find that my negative criticisms, the ways I put myself down, my weaknesses, they are my enemies. So I am claiming that God is going to be my strength in those situations. So let me close this in prayer and then I'll give you an activation for this next week. So God, I ask that you would take everything I said that is valuable and bring it home, put the gold nuggets in the pockets of my listeners, and anything I said that is not valuable, Lord, let it just blow away. I pray above all else that each of us would be able to be humble and contrite and admit the areas that we have problems and in so doing that we would be able to cash in on your bounty and your grace. Lord, I just declare that. I pray for that. I do not want to have to struggle with being in my own head, being strong because I turn things into idols. So please forgive me. And I come to you right now asking that you would bless this blog in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, thank you so much for listening. Um, I would my suggestion to you for this next week, honestly, is to pay attention to times in which you feel weak, disgruntled, and dissatisfied. Not ignore it, not try to shy away from it, but immediately bring it before the Lord and say, There you go, Lord, there's my weakness. Now I am sanctifying it unto you. I'm giving thanks for that. I'm asking you to meet me here. I would like to see the riches from your spiritual heavenly realms brought to bear on this situation. That is bringing the kingdom of God here on earth. So that's my prayer for you guys. Would you all please um, share this up with people who you don't think normally would be listening to this? And also, would you comment please to me on my um, email, drjuliecaton at gmail.com or on Facebook about how this message about giving over your weaknesses to God has helped you. Um, also, we came on at a different time. We came on at 5 o'clock tonight. I am flexible and open to changing um, the bread basket time. If this is a more convenient time than my 4 o'clock hour, would you please let me know? Or let me know um, what other time of the week would be good for you because we're in the, um, how would you call it, transition stage. Okay? I love you all. Thank you so much for listening to me. Blessings. <laughs>